But listen, I don't want any more bullshit. bullshit. Man, one thing you got to give to Big Dick Chris Ballard, he has a philosophy, he has a plan. Now, his plan thrills some Colts fans like having their balls tickled, or for the ladies, like having your nipples tickled with a feather. And his plan makes some Colts fans asses itch. But either way, you gotta give it to him. He has a master plan and he sticks to it. The question is, what is that master plan? That's what we're gonna dig into today because a lot of you guys have asked me in the comments to talk about who I think they'll draft, who I think they should draft, who I think they should pick up as free agents, etc. But before we get into that, and we will dive into that as we get closer to the draft, before we get into that, let me lay out for you what I think Chris Ballard's master plan is for 2021 to basically make the NFL his bitch. And if you wonder how I know, how I could possibly know his master plan, well, it's because I understand pro football. It's because I have a gift for analysis. I have a gift for pattern recognition, for understanding how systems work. But I mean, in short, because I'm that motherfucking dude. So let's jump into this shit and I'm going to dissect, deconstruct and decode Chris Ballard's master plan for 2021. But before I do that, let me welcome you back. Or if it's your first fucking time here, let me welcome you to the number one uncensored cult podcast on the planet. The one and only world's famous. You know it. You love it. You know how we do the bullshit free cult podcast podcast. I'm your host, Harkana Jala, aka the Bad Boy Genius, at your motherfucking service as always. And like I said, we're going to jump right into answering the question, what is Chris Ballard's master plan for making the NFL his bitch in 2021? But before we do, you being the pimp that you are, and I know you're a pimp because you're fucking with me, I want you to help me out, take your pimp ass finger, smash the like button down below. It's free to you, but it will help us because when you like, share, and subscribe, it helps the algorithm to share this podcast video with other real deal Colts fans like yourself. So very quickly, hit that like button, share this, make sure you subscribe. And last but not least, there are three ways down below you can donate. I ask you if you appreciate what we're doing, if you enjoy it, help your man out and send us a small donation. $20, $15, $10, $5, even $1 will help us to create more and more of the content for you. The kind of content that you motherfuckers tell me you like. And that means specifically 100% bullshit free. All right. I appreciate you. Thank you for doing that. Now that that's out the way, let's chop it the fuck up. So what's Big Dick Chris Ballard's master plan to basically make the NFL his bitch in 2021? Well, if you haven't heard already, I'm going to let you know that the Colts re-signed defensive end al Qadeen Muhammad, their own free agent. They re-signed him to another year deal for about three and a half million dollars. And that gives you a hint and a clue as to what Chris Ballard's plan is. Think about it. Since free agency started, it's been about almost three weeks now. In almost three weeks of free agency, people have been all over Twitter, all over Facebook, all over YouTube, pulling their hair out, going crazy, wanting Chris Ballard to sign this person and that person and wondering and waiting to see, you know, is he going to go for this guy? Is he going to sign that guy? Is he interested in this guy, et cetera, et cetera, right? Everybody's been waiting for him to sign a pass rusher, a uh, left tackle, and he's dipped into free agency. He's dipped in a little bit, but let's look at what he has done. What free agents has he signed? Well, I'll give you a hint. Almost all of them are his own fucking free agents, right? He re-signed Xavier Rhodes. He re-signed T.Y. Hilton. He's now re-signed Alquadine Muhammad. He's tendered deals to make sure that he re-signs his restricted free agents, George Odom, as well as Zach Pascal. I mean, think about it. Other than those guys, he's really only signed some depth guys. You know, he signed Isaac Rochelle, a defensive end from the Los Angeles Chargers. 
He signed a couple of offensive tackles, Sam Tevy and Julian Davenport. Uh, Tevy played with the Chargers. Julian Davenport played with Miami. These guys are left tackles, but they are, you know, depth left tackles at best, particularly Julian Davenport. Um, Apparently, they see something they like, and hey, I trust them. They know more than me. I just don't fucking see what it is they like with Julian Davenport. It sure as fuck has not been his performance on the field thus far. Apparently, they see potential there. But those guys, again, are depth signings at best. And what does that speak to? Well, it speaks to some degree. What it tells you is, honestly, probably all those motherfuckers that you were excited about in free agency, Chris Ballard and his team didn't think that a lot of those guys were A, worth the money they were going to get, and B, I don't think they believe a lot of those guys were better than what they had on the roster already. Now, you may disagree, but my guess is Chris Ballard and his team believe that if you gave them the same amount of snaps, that they could get the same kind of production from Kimoko Ture and Taekwon Lewis, uh, or, or at least similar production for, you know, a hell of a lot less money, like 15% of what they would have to pay these guys. So that is what you're probably seeing there mostly. But I think also this is giving you a clue into Chris Ballard's master plan. Okay. Chris Ballard himself made the comment that the Super Bowl window was definitely not anywhere near closing for the Colts. But he did say it may be beginning to open. So let's talk about that. Think about what that means. Generally, you have a three to five year window where you can really take a run and win in a couple of Super Bowls and then you got to retool, reload, etc. Because of the way that the league is set up, you know, you're going to lose guys because you can't pay them all. Some guys are going to age out on you and lose their effectiveness, etc. Right. So based on Chris Ballard's own words, he believes apparently that the next three to five years is the window for the Colts to make a run and win in a couple of Super Bowls. And that makes sense because, remember, Frank Reich has revealed that he and Ballard were essentially planning to move up in the draft to try to get their franchise quarterback of the future. And that means, A, there was a quarterback or two, at least one quarterback they really liked in this draft. But, B, that speaks to the fact that they truly believe that they're entering a three to five year window where they could really have a shot at winning a Super Bowl or two, all right? So based on that, everything kind of makes sense when you think about that framework. So Chris Ballard's looking at, hey, we need to have a team that can realistically contend to win a Super Bowl or two in the next three to five years. So to do that, You want to have in place, locked in, the top players you have on your roster right now, the game-changing players, the players that really make a difference can win games for you. You want to have them locked in right now over the next three to five years, okay? They made a trade to get their quarterback. They're betting Carson Wentz is going to be the quarterback that can take them there over the next three to five years. That's the biggest piece. Now you've got to lock in the foundational players that you already have on your roster and add a few more. And the only way to really add a few more realistically is to do it through young, relatively inexpensive talent through the draft. Okay, so you have your quarterback, you believe now you have a great offensive line. You lost the key piece to it. One of the key pieces, if not the key piece. So you've got to replace that left tackle. You need a left tackle that can anchor into this line for the next five plus years. Because you're going to re-sign Quentin. You've already re-signed Kelly, right? You've got Glow locked in at right guard. You're about to uh, re-up with Braden Smith. Now you need your left tackle that's going to anchor it all. Where's the best place to get that? In the draft, that's going to be inexpensive. You can't bring in Trent Williams for $20 million right now, number one, because it's too much money and it hamstrings you under the salary cap 
perhaps, but even more importantly than that, the dude's like 33 years old. In five years, he'll be 38. See, that's not what you need. You need somebody who can be stable and growing with the rest of your guys, hitting their prime over the next three to five years. So you want to get that left tackle of the future in the draft. That's why he didn't go out and spend a bunch of money on any that you could plug in and maybe get a year or two out of them, no matter how good they are. That's why he didn't do that. You need that left tackle, young, in the draft that can grow with this great offensive line you have, all right? You have your running backs locked in. They're young. They're growing into their prime. You're in good shape there. You have at least two of your wide receivers of the future on your roster in Paris Campbell and definitely in Michael Pittman Jr., who I believe has star written all over him. I think in the next two years, you're going to see Michael Pittman Jr. morph and develop into a Michael Thomas level performer. I really do. Now, what do you need to add to that? You have solid tight ends, particularly in Jack Doyle. But what did Jim Irsay say? He said, hey, I still feel like we need another dynamic offensive weapon. You need a dynamic tight end. We know Frank Reich loves it. It's what you need. So a lot of people wanted him to go out and get Jonu Smith. Again, it's a lot of money. Now, maybe Zach Ertz could be a guy you could plug in for a year or two. Maybe he has a couple years left of dynamic play if it's not too expensive. But what you really want to do is get you a motherfucking beast like Kyle Pitts in the draft. Now, Kyle Pitts is not going to be available when they pick. But you want to find a young, athletic tight end that can essentially be a playmaking tight end. Basically, you want Eric Ebron type without the drops and without the silliness, you feel me? Without the flakiness, without the shadiness, without the shystiness. And I loved Eric Ebron when he was here. I love what he did on the field. I even liked his attitude. I, I liked his kind of playful, confident attitude. The problem is, you know, it got out of hand at times, and then the drops had to go, and, you know, he got shisty at the end there. So whatever. You want to get that tight end in the draft in the next year or two. If he's there this year, that'd be great. But you could have, you could get him next year too for the run you're about to go on. Now, it'd be nice to have another big time wide receiver that you can groom to take over for T.Y. Hilton in a year or two. Don't be surprised if they draft one if they're there this year. But like I said, it could be this year or next year. But now let's flip over to the defensive side of the ball where they're really in good shape. But let's flip over and talk about the one position everybody's been talking about since the end of last year and the one that I know you want to talk about, which is edge rush. Now, do they have their disruptive edge rusher of the future on their roster? Do they have their Dwight Freeney or Robert Mathis replacement on the roster now? In Kamoko Torre, uh, Ben Banigou, I don't think so. Now, Komoko could evolve to be great, but I haven't seen anything yet that makes me think any of those guys can be the next Freeney or Mathis. So look for them to be trying to draft that guy, like I said, either this year or next year. You might see them bring back a stopgap defensive end. You might see them bring back um, Justin Houston at a reasonable price for a year or two. You know, he was he was still productive last year. But they're looking for that guy. And I don't believe Ballard was sold that that guy was out there this year, even for the right price. Now, maybe if Trey Hendrickson or one of those guys had been down in the, you know, 10, 11 million per year range, he might have swung at them. But again... There's every reason to believe that you can find that guy in this year's or guys comparable to the players who were on the uh, free agent market. There's every reason to believe that you could find that guy this year or next year. If you believe that guy is there at 21, I would take him at 21 and then get my left tackle in the second round because this is a deep draft in left tackles. Um, It's fairly deep in edge, too, so I believe you're going to see them take an edge rusher and a left tackle round one, round two, 
in that order or in the reverse order, depending on what players are there. You might see Ballard move down a few spots if he believes he can get the guys he wants in the second round and, and then pick up an extra pick. But expect them to come out of this draft absolutely with a guy they think is the left tackle in the future. And I think they're going to try very hard to come out with a edge rusher. And I expect the edge rusher they take to be explosive. So they may take a guy who's less polished, but I think they're going to really be looking for explosiveness. So I don't know. That might knock Jalen Phillips out of it. You know, I'm going to fucking come all over myself if they somehow get quitty pay at 21 or any other time. But suffice it to say, they're going to come out of this draft with a left tackle for sure. And I believe an edge rusher, they believe, can be disruptive. Now, another thing that I think you should probably look for at some point in this draft, maybe in the fourth round, but then again, this might be why uh, Ballard could trade back and pick up an extra pick in round two or three. Um, I think you're going to see them take another cornerback in this draft. Um, you need somebody to possibly take over for Rhodes or even possibly take over for Rocky Sin if he doesn't come together this season. But expect I, I fully expect him to take a cornerback that they think can be a keeper, a starter in this year's draft. So that's what you should expect to see this season. In the upcoming draft, I guarantee you, Ballard and his team, they will come out of this draft with a guy they believe can be their left tackle for the next five to ten years and play at a high level. After that, expect them to target an edge rusher. Expect them to target an athletic, explosive tight end. Expect them, I think, to look for a very strong shutdown cornerback. And, you know, which one of those they get and when is going to depend on how the draft falls. And that really all falls in line with what I believe Ballard's master plan is. Lockdown, the game changers you have on the roster right now. Remember, the context is he believes they're going into their Super Bowl window. So the next three to five, possibly even seven years, he's thinking we can win a Super Bowl or two. This is our shot. So they've got their quarterback. They got the guy they believe is their franchise quarterback to take them there. Now you lock in game-changing talent you have on your roster, at the top of the roster, the Maniac, Quentin Nelson, Braden Smith. You definitely should also include in there my man Naeem Hines. And don't forget that if Carson plays the way you expect him to, Over the next two years, you're going to have to back the Brink truck up for him in two years. So you have to be looking forward to that as well. So you want to lock those guys in. Then you want to add foundational game changers as young, inexpensive talent in the draft. You're looking for your left tackle, obviously. You're looking for an edge rusher who can impact and change the game. You're looking for a tight end who can be a game changer and a game breaker. You're certainly looking for a shutdown quarterback. You need that, uh, even if Rocky Sin works out. Um, Xavier, you got to figure, has this year and maybe one more left in him. And if he plays outstanding after this year, you might not even be able to afford him next year. So you got to be looking there. And then here's another thing you can expect. Based on all that, one of the reasons I think Ballard and these guys have been slow to pull the trigger during free agency during this first wave is because I believe you might see even more movement on the free agent market from the Colts after the draft. After they see what they're able to get, who falls to them, what pieces they're able to add that they really feel good about, then they may go back into the free agent market and take a look at plucking up some of the guys that might be left to plug in holes that they weren't able to fill during the draft. You get what I'm saying? Here's the thing, you you know, you don't want to pay a motherfucking edge rusher that you think is good or might be very good, but not great. You don't want to pay that motherfucker a bunch of money. And then a guy you feel could be otherworldly falls into your lap in the draft. Now you got a motherfucker that you're paying a bunch of money to who's going to take away reps, take away playing time from the motherfucker you just drafted. You don't want to have yourself in that position, whether it's edge rusher, left tackle, cornerback, whatever. 
right? So I think they want to see what pieces do we add that we feel really good about that we want to plug in right away in the draft. And then after that, they'll reevaluate and maybe go back into the free agent market and make a couple of acquisitions. You feel me? So either way, that's Ballard's master plan. And I believe with everything in me, I'm very confident that that's how you're going to see it play out over the rest of this offseason and even going into the next few years. But you know what? I mean, I'm kind of fucking cocky because I do my homework. I don't talk shit about shit that I don't know what I'm talking about. But here, I'm fucking pretty confident. But you know what? I still could be wrong. So you let me know what you think. Let me know in the comments below whether you agree or disagree with my assessment, my analysis, and what I think Ballard's master plan is. And let me know if you think it's something else or if there's even something you think I missed. Either way, I appreciate you being here. I appreciate you liking this video, sharing it, subscribing. And I also, if you donated to us today, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. I'm going to say to you, the same thing I'm going to say to any Colts player, Colts coach, or Colts front office person who might be listening or watching, because I know some of y'all do. Let's fucking knock this offseason out the park. Let's put a roster together that can make the rest of the NFL our bitch. And let's go out and win a couple more fucking Lombardi, baby. Peace. And win another fucking Lombardi.